Say hi. Say hi to the camera. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been a while since I've actually filmed and uploaded a video. I think it's been a couple months now. But we've hit sort of the midpoints of the year. Today I will be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Suffice to say, I am in the biggest reading slump I've ever been this year. I haven't touched a book since mid-May. It's been a lot as of late. I graduated college. It hasn't really hit me yet because it just hasn't. Loki looking for a job, but you know, it's not looking too good right now, but it is what it is. Anyways, uh, before we get started, I would like to let all of you know that this video is sponsored. Thank God. So I am working with Redbubble for this video and hi there. How's it going? I am working with Redbubble for this video, and if you guys didn't know, Redbubble is this website. It's this great website where artists upload um, merch and their own designs, and you can buy them on mugs, blankets, pillows, t-shirts, a bunch of stuff. And um, I... Okay! I will leave a link down below. It has all the items that I picked out, because the theme for this Redbubble haul is favorites. Um, and I thought, what better way to include it, you know, in a favorites video talking about some of my most anticipated reads and favorite books I've read so far this year, which is the mid-year book freakout tag. So this tag was also created by Ellie and Chimmy, and I'll leave the links to their channels down below. Before we get started into the actual tag, I just wanted to, to show you guys what I got from Redbubble. The first item that I got is this shirt that says, support your local girl gang. I actually um, saw Ashley from Ashley Outpage, a friend of mine. Um, wearing the shirt in her red bubble haul and I was like I gotta have that. So most of the things that I picked out for this haul a bunch of posters because I wanted to sort of like revamp and redecorate my room and these two here I haven't hung up yet they're mostly sort of like an abstract aesthetic sort of futuristic piece but I also shot a little clip of my wall of the posters that I got and I'll show you guys that now. So I also got this like sort of orange poster with a bunch of plants on it because my overall goal is to get a bunch of plants from my room. Another poster I got with a bunch of colorful flowers, a cat. Overall I really like the aesthetic and the vibe that this poster had with the sort of moon rose in it. And then I found this funny poster that said, that had the message of OK Boomer, which I thought was, you know, appropriate. It's the first thing you see um, when you open the door to my room. I found this really cool piece of a poster, sort of like a music sheet. You guys didn't know I played piano for quite a while. It was sort of nostalgic and I thought really simple and elegant, so I got that one as well. So if you guys are interested, I will leave this code on the screen here that you guys will be able to use to get 15% off your entire order. So uh, thank you again to Redbubble for coming through and uh, sponsoring this video. Now with that being said, let's get straight into the tag. So the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019. Oh uh, no, in 2020. Talked about this book already on my channel and I even got a tattoo for it in case you guys didn't know for all the new people um, that are subscribed to my channel. It's A Little Life by Haya Yanagihara. This book was phenomenal. It was traumatic. It was, it was a terrible experience. I actually did a whole video talking about this book. I didn't really go into spoilers, I don't think. Bottom line, I would not recommend this book to anyone. There are a bunch of trigger warnings in this book and I will leave a link to that video that you can watch that also has all the list of all the trigger warnings um, from what I remember reading this book. If you guys didn't know what this book is about, it's basically revolving um, around the lives of these friends and how their relationships affect each other as well as other people around them, specifically on one certain character and how his tragic past also affects his future and his relationship with his friends and all that. This book is super sad, and honestly, I couldn't think of any other book to start off this great year of 2020. The second question is the best sequel you've read so far. I want to give this award to Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by She Who Shall Not Be Named. So fun fact, I was in a read-along with a bunch of friends. We've never read Harry Potter before. We call ourselves Harry Potter and the Virgins. Now we are ex-Harry Potter and the Virgins because we decided not to continue the series anymore because of all the transphobic things that J.K. Rowling, how blatantly ignorant 
um, and transphobic and hurting her tweets have been and what she's been saying so far. And it just didn't really make sense for us to pick up and support her work anymore. And honestly, I personally wouldn't have picked it up anymore as well. So if you disagree with me, and if you're going to let me know down in the comments below justifying your, you know, opinions on JK Rowling and why she isn't a turf, really don't need to comment that because I'll end up deleting it and maybe end up blocking you guys because that's not who I support and that's not, I don't share the same views as her. I think she's extremely ignorant and transphobic and she's just living in this world of white privilege that you know, a lot of trans people can't relate to. Of all the three books that I read so far, this book was by far the best. It was a lot darker, a lot more mysterious. And if JK Rowling had just kept her mouth shut, if we had continued, I felt like my overall thoughts and experiences with the series would have progressed. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And we're just gonna stop at this book. So it is what it is. You know, in the end, I didn't grow up on that nostalgia. I'm not missing any of that. And I. I sort of get and understand why, but at the same time, this isn't something that you can differentiate the work from the artists because there's so much damage that has been done that's hurting other people and I'm not gonna support that. So that's all I'm gonna say about this book. It was great while it lasted, it was fun, it was dark and more mature. And so yeah, that's basically it on what I wanna say about this book. The third question is, what new release you haven't read yet, but want to? So. This release, I've been hearing so many people talking about it, especially since it just came out. So for that question, it's The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Yes, this is the book of the month book. A fun fact, I was actually gonna work with them on the books that they sent me. And I ended up having to pull out of my partnership with them because of the unfortunate actions that they performed against a um, creator of color, a black creator. So I deliberately pulled out of my partnership with them, but I still got the books. So, who actually won here? This book is about two sisters, one who is white passing, and according to the blurb, it's an exploration of gender, race, and identity, something that is super prevalent and important now, and I think that a lot of people should educate themselves who aren't black to be allies and to educate themselves and other people. I think that's really important. Number four is, what is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year? Now, for this one, I'm gonna put the, the picture of the book here because I don't have it yet, but, um, it's The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins, and this book comes out on October 27th. I have never read any Stephanie Perkins books before, aside from There's Someone Inside Your House. A lot of people hated that book. You know, I was the minority in this one because I genuinely really enjoyed it. It was honestly a fun time. It's not like the biggest piece of literature out there. It's not something that can be analyzed and critiqued. I mean, it could, you know, it's just how a lot of horror movies, you know, are dissected in a way where it's just like the greatest piece of cinema or held up to the level of cinema of masterpiece, you know? I mean, there are some, don't get me wrong, but you know, a slasher movie, I don't think any slasher movie has won like an Oscar award. It was a good time, slasher, bloody, gory fun. There aren't a lot of slasher um, horror books in the YA genre anyway. So I really enjoyed it because it put a lot of, you know, tropes that I found in horror movies that I generally enjoyed into a book format and I had a fun time. So I'm really excited and curious to see what happens in this, in the next horror slasher book that she's gonna write. I never read any of her contemporary books and I heard that they were pretty bad. Again, this premise sounds super intriguing and super interesting. It's about these two girls, two best friends, and they go backpacking in the forest into the woods and then they run into a serial killer. So I just really like um, sort of confrontational premises like this and I'm curious to see um, to an extent how that would go. So number five is the biggest disappointment of 2020. For me, that book would have to be The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. So this book was recommended to me as a cult and haunted houses and I was like, damn. Here for it. I just generally think that UK thrillers aren't for me or because, uh, don't get me wrong, I love thrillers, but there's just something about UK thrillers. They're just all the same, but they're not the same. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like when they're written, I can tell that it's in the UK versus like where in the US there are more, I feel like there's more dynamic to the US characters. Don't get me wrong, not all UK thrillers aren't for me. I personally enjoyed, you know, a lot of UK thrillers. But I just find that majority, general, the UK thriller books, I just don't as enjoy it as much as US. The reason why I didn't really enjoy this book is because I find a lot of the characters' actions to be really just so stupid. I'm just gonna say, put it bluntly out there. There's an instance in this book where the main character... Hello, everybody. So my camera died and it's been a couple of days later. 
I lied. Mm, it's actually more been like a fucking week. So, hello, a week later. Um, I sort of forgot <laughs> what I even, what book I was even on. Um, I think I was on the family upstairs and I'm going to the questions on my phone. Odin, say hi to the camera. Say hi to the camera. Yes, I was talking about how I didn't really like this particular book. And I was coming up, I was drawing up shorts and coming up real hard as to why I didn't like it as much. There were a couple of instances, instances, <laughs> English. There were a couple of instances in this book where the main character would do something completely dumb. Like, it just made no sense to me whatsoever. If realistically, if I was in her situation, I would be freaking out because there was this one part, this one part in the book. This girl goes home to the home of this stranger, okay, that she just met. This stranger locks her in a particular room with a bed and everything for like the entire night. She sleeps it off, but when she wakes up, she finds out that the room is locked, her cell phone is gone, and she can't get out. So, you know, he, I mean, he eventually lets her out. She doesn't question it, you know? She goes downstairs and she's just like, homeboy, bestie that I just met last night. Where's my phone? Why do you have it? You know, asking, I was like, you know, some basic good questions, you know, that would arouse suspicion and whatnot. And this guy's like, I don't know, like, girl, I was just, you know, being a weirdo, you know, I was just there. I just took your phone because I wanted to, I don't, bless you, bless you, God bless you, babe. <laughs> Uh, where was I? He, he's just like, I just took your phone because, you know, of plot reasons. Like, gives the worst excuse ever that I'm just like, how? How does this even make sense to you? And, girl, I don't even know what's her name. What's her name again? Libby? Is it Libby? Libby Jones? She says, she goes, hmm. Hmm. You know what, bestie? That's perfectly okay. Thanks, bestie. You are astounding, amazing, incredible. Thank you for thinking of me, taking my phone away, and locking me up in a room all night long. And I'm over here just like, you idiot, inconsolable, stupid, dumb I can't even. Anyways, so she leaves, and you know, stuff like that happens, and there's so many characters in this book. I honestly wouldn't even call this book a thriller. I feel like there are certain elements and aspects that were thrown in here that, sure, could make it... I guess an overall thriller book. It's more like a, I don't know, family drama, I would call it. I mean, I went on the Goodreads reviews and a whole lot of people agree with me. So I'm not the only one, but there are certain people who liked it. Who knows, you might like it. This book might be for you. It, I would honestly say it might be a good starter, I guess for a UK book that deals with like cults and families. It has one of my favorite tropes. That's why I picked it up. This book has one of my favorite tropes where a long lost relative or some random person receives a mysterious will or something like that, that tells them, hey, I'm your dead grandma or grandpa and I left you a huge estate for no apparent reason. So you must come and collect it. And upon arriving, dead grandparents don't tell you that there are murderous siblings or, you know, a hidden tragic past that the main character all of a sudden is like, holy shit, what have myself gotten into? But you know in the end that they got to inherit all this wealth and all this house. So, I mean, it does end happily for them because I have not yet read a single character in this scenario who has not had a happy ending. Anyways, that was a really rough tangent on that, but the family stares, but Lisa Jewel, folks. So next is number six, I think. Biggest surprise. Wow. How the books were right here, you could literally see. Spoilers! For this one, I have to go with Vif- Vif- Oh, 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 oh fuck me. Uh, so the next book I'm gonna go with is Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergi Diachenko. This is a Russian translated um, work and it is one of the best, just one of the best amazing stories I've ever read in my entire life. The way that this author describes certain things and smells and sounds, it's out of this world, literally out of this world. If you read the book, you'll know exactly what I mean. This book is, is different. It's just on a completely different level. So if you like books like Middle Game or, you know, really wacky, just really weird books, I would highly recommend this one. Or if you trust my sort of like recommendations and you like the books that I read, I feel like um, you might really like this one. This book was compared to like Harry Potter because a bunch of kids go to the school for, 
you know, magic and to learn magic and all that. It's very, extremely different from Harry Potter. So this book primarily follows a young girl who, you know, runs into a mysterious stranger who gives her these weird tasks. Every time she completes a task, she vomits up a gold coin. And with these gold coins, she's admitted entry to this school where she's, you know, learning magic. However, there's a cost. For every incorrect spell or magic they perform, they themselves don't get hurt, but a friend or a family pays the price. Basically that the bigger the spell and the bigger that they mess up, the bigger the consequences. Like that family member could die or get bad So my camera battery died again, jeez. So it's really great because this is like the first book I've read that contains the sort of weird magic system and the sort of magic cast, if you understand what I'm saying. It's really interesting and there's a lot more to it. It's super deep as well. Apparently this book is the first in a trilogy, but the other two books haven't been translated to English yet and I'm waiting for them to because this, it really feels like, you know, I could literally obtain some of this magic somehow. Y'all should just read this, please. I literally have heard nobody talking about this book. I saw this book, you know, at, I think Barnes & Noble, I think that was it. Highly recommend. Thoroughly surprised me, was not expecting this book to go in any direction that I thought it was going to go into, and profound. So, chef's kiss. All right, number seven is favorite new author, debut, or new to you? So, for this book, this book was, this book took me by surprise. And honestly, it was a little underwhelming, but also I think that I just had overall too high expectations. This book is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Holy shit, let me just talk about this book for a second. This book is, is something else. It's one of the shortest thriller books I've ever read, but one of the most impactful. If you're looking for something that delivers, that truly delivers on every level of thrills, of creepiness and twists, I think that this book really does its job well. The reason why I think I did not give it a full five stars, this one was a four to five, which is a fucking good rating, don't get me wrong, but I I heard everybody talking about this book. I saw this book a while back, but you know, really never, I never really thought much about it until some of my friends read it and they're like, you have to read it, it's insane, it's incredible, the audiobook is even creepier. I'm gonna give you a one-liner basic premise of what this book is about because I know a lot of people, you know, they get really frustrated. They're like, I know that you say going into some book, thriller books especially, might be good and all, but uh, I still wanna know what the book is about because how am I supposed to know what this book is about or it's even interesting if I don't even know what it's about. So let me tell you. So this book follows a couple who drive off, um, you know, have a road trip to go meet the boyfriend's parents. However, they get stranded at an abandoned school and terrifying things, weird terrifying things ensue. That's all I'm gonna say. Do with that information what you will. It's great, it's profound, I highly recommend it. The writing style for me was really straightforward. But the story, I think overall, the whole story itself and the characters were really, were really strong. Let me go back as to why that this book isn't a full five star read. My expectations were way too high for something so short. And unfortunately for me, I called part of the twist. But I feel like no matter what, if you, even if you call it the twist or if you don't know, which might be even better for you, you'll still enjoy this book because it just leaves that just impact on you. And also for such a short book, hefty twist. It was a big, solid twist and it was great. I called it, but I didn't realize the whole bigger picture of it. So that was great for me. What's great about this book as well is that once you reach the ending, um, I believe that, I can't remember if it's you read from the end to the beginning or if you read from the beginning to the end again, you'll get everything. So you will understand the twist and everything once it happens, but you'll just get a bigger picture of the whole thing once you read it front to back um, or back to front again, something like that. How do you recommend for any um, seasoned thriller readers? Nothing too like outrageous or scary or anything like that, but this was done really well and it's gonna be a Netflix movie, I believe, with Toni Collette. Super excited. Not sure how this will play out, but I'm still very excited, so. Hi Ronan, are you enjoying this so far? Number eight, newest fictional crush. For this one, it's gonna be non-existent, just like in real life. Moving on. Number nine, newest favorite character. So my newest favorite character of all the books um, that I've shown you guys would probably have to be Ron Weasley. Um, I talked about him a lot in like my previous 
Harry Potter vlogs um, when I was reading the books for the first time. But now that I'm not continuing the books anymore, you know, it is what it is. But for me, um, he was just that one character that really made the whole series better for me. I really liked his loyalty, his friendships, how he stood up to his friends and for his friend, how he stood up to his friends, how he stood up for his friends and stood up like to bullies. And he was just so sassy. He was one of the sassiest characters I've ever read in a middle grade book. And I was not expecting that whatsoever. I think that just made it even better for me. He was just a really overall good, wholesome character. And, you know, I would have been curious to see how his character growth would be or, you know, would go into, but alas, this is why we can't have nice things. All right, number 10 is a book that made you cry. So if you guys know me, and if you guys have been watching, you guys are probably already know what book I'm gonna be talking about. This book is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Wait a second, did I just talk about this book already in the beginning of the video? Hold up, hold up, hold up. I feel like I talked about you already. Again, I'm filming this literally a week later, so I'm having a hard time remembering. I feel like I did. You know what, when I edit, I'll probably be like, you are stupid, and you did talk about this book already. So, yes, to answer the question, I cried so badly. Um, like, during the last, I believe, 50 pages. Devastating. It was sickening. Sickening, I tell you. Mm, okay. Um, let me see. What is next? Question 11. A book that made you happy. You guys, you guys, I reread this book and I completed the other two books in that series. It's a four book series. It's so good. Okay, so if you guys like werewolves, okay, and if you guys want representation, especially own voices representation, ace rep, hello, bisexual rep, gender fluid, you guys, gender fluid, gay, bisexual, ace werewolves. You heard me right, folks. There are werewolves and they're fucking gay. I love it. This book series is Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This series, Wolf Song, incredible. Like it literally tugged my heartstrings. It was so sweet and cute. It was everything I could ever want. I love it a lot. It's about this family that moves back to this town they once lived in, but we're primarily following a human character. But this human character must be protected at all costs. He is so, he's so great, you guys. He, you just need to read it. I think that once you read it, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. If you guys want a cute, incredible, action-packed, gay werewolf story, I would highly recommend the series. The last book is coming out in October, I believe. So super excited for that, but highly recommend Wolf Song um, and the rest of the series by TJ Klune. So definitely let me know what you guys think because literally, I need everyone to read the series. It's great. The writing style is very simple. It had one of the most simplistic writing styles I've ever read, but because of its simplicity, I just enjoy the story more, and it was just almost poetic in a way. It was very simple, very beautiful, beautifully written, and it was just so beautiful overall. If you trust my recommendations, do yourself a favor and go read Full Song by TJ Klune. You're welcome. So number 12, is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. So for this one, I actually bought myself and it's actually a UK edition, Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. It has one of the best illustrated covers I've ever seen along with red stained pages. So this book was good. Um, I feel like it could have been like literally shortened down to like maybe 400 pages instead of the 800 pages it was. We primarily follow these two characters trying to solve a murder mystery in this sort of like urban, fantasy world. Imagine fairies and, you know, fantasy elements like that, but they have like actual toilets and cars and skyscrapers. So I guess it's not that weird to think about it, but I didn't really realize that going into this. It was marketed as a full-fledged fantasy and I don't really think I saw it that way. So, all right, last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So some honorable mentions. I really want to pick up the fifth season. I've um, actually had this book for a while now. I don't even, I don't remember purchasing it. But this book is by N.K. Jemisin and I've heard nothing but incredible things about this book. I heard that the first 50 to 80 pages or so are a little hard to get into because of the world building and info dump. I might just listen to like the beginning on audio just because I retain information better that way. I don't really know what this book is about. I just know that I purchased this a while ago and I forgot I had it. So another book that I was given and I want to read is Smash It by Francina Simone. Francina Simone is a dear friend of mine who is also a booktuber and an author. I will leave a link down below where you can also pre-order. This gem comes out in September. 
Another book that I picked up, and I started it, but then I put it down just because I didn't really feel it. Um, not in a bad way or anything, but it's Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I heard sort of mixed things about this book, but more good than bad. I heard it was good, you know, for a fantasy and everything. A lot of people were just disappointed on where the story went and what character end up with whom. So, so far what I've read wasn't bad at all. I just wasn't in the mood, but hopefully I'll be able to finish this this year. So last but not least is a book I purchased also by the same author as the fifth season, and this is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Heard this has more of a um, fantasy whimsical elements, which I'm really excited for. I've already started this actually. I'm like 15 pages in and so far it's really good. Um, but that's all I'm gonna say on that. So yeah, I guess this is pretty much it for this video. This video was a mess. Listen, it's been a while. I always come back and being like, oh, I hope to see you guys in a new video. And I film a video and then it, nothing happens for like two months and then I'm back and then I forget how to do everything. And it's a cycle that repeats. 2020 is a great year. Love it for me. Uh, yeah, thank you again to Redbubble for sponsoring this video. And if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link down below where you can get 50% off your entire purchase. But thank you again so much for watching, guys, and I will see you guys all soon with a new video. I'm still doing this, huh? I feel like no one ever covers their camera with their hand anymore, so... Bye, guys. Notification. Ooh, Kayla just uploaded a new video. Hey, it's the Mid-Year Book Freakout tag. What are the odds? Hi, Kayla. I have been doing the mid-year book freakout for maybe five years in a row. It's Trooper. my favorite thing. It was created originally by Champion Ali, who had a link down below, and gradually fall completely in love with their writing. And then... I will watch the sad to support other booktubers.